Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today we're going to talk about prospect theory and loss aversion, and why this is important for an expert tester to understand. Understanding the principles of prospect theory and loss aversion will help you be a better tester, because it'll help you understand how the people you're working with may be making decisions coming from a place of fear, and the, the loss aversion strategies you can take to make sure that they're wanting to test based on the outcome they'll get, and not their fear of losing out on something. In the book, Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, Daniel Kahneman outlines prospect theory, and he outlines the three main parts of prospect theory. The first is that we evaluate things based on a neutral reference point. The second is that we have a diminishing sensitivity to changes. And the third is that most people have an aversion to loss. We won't talk too much about these first two points, the diminishing sensitivity and the neutral reference point. I want to talk about loss aversion and how that's something you need to understand so you can know how to shape your conversations with the clients and, and the, the people you're testing with. Let me give you an example of what loss aversion looks like. Suppose that I have a coin and I tell you, if I flip this coin and it lands on heads, you will lose $100. But if I flip a coin and it lands on tails, you will gain $150. Now, most people who are honest with themselves see this as a bad deal. They don't want to flip a coin when they have the potential of losing $100, even if the flip of the coin will give them $150. So even though the positive is better, the, the positive outcome, the loss aversion is stronger. And what this means is that most people have an aversion to losing. For most people, a loss is heavier and weightier than the potential of a gain. This may go back to some kind of evolutionary background where you know, something that's going to kill you is much more important to pay attention to than something that's not. And the people that survived were the ones that paid to paid attention to the, the really dangerous things out there. Loss aversion is no different. There are things that are negative, and for some reason as humans, we want to pay more attention to that. In the studies that people have done, they found that the loss aversion ratio is roughly between 1.5 to 2.5. When what that means is that if you have an expected loss of, say, $100, that you'd have to have a potential positive outcome of one and a half times to two and a half times that to make up for the loss. So if you're gonna lose $100, then you might need $250 as the potential in the coin toss to give that positive balance to your aversion loss. So the loss aversion ratio helps you see that people want to have positive outcomes and they're worried about the negative outcomes. So what does this have to do with testing? Well, as testers, we're always testing experiences. And there are some people, in fact, most of us, are worried that the test we're going to do will create a ne negative experience. The loss aversion is there in our decision-making and how we come up with variations in what we decide to test. And we need to understand that most people who haven't seen the results of testing, good testing anyway, will come in with a loss aversion mindset where they don't want to test things because they're, because they're worried about it doing worse. This might be a good time for self-evaluation for you and for your clients. You might ask yourself, how well do I deal with risk? Are you nervous about a test? Do you fear that the, an experience in the test will be a losing experience? Another way to evaluate how much of a loss aversion you have is to do the same experiment. So pretend that if you flip a coin, one side will make you lose $10. How much will you have to gain on the other side of the coin to make that bet or that gamble or, or the experiment worth it to you. If you're going to lose $10, do you need to make 15 or 20 or 30 or 50 for you to say that's a good deal in your ticket? Now suppose we do it with $2,000 on the negative side. If you lose $1,000 on a tails flip, how much of a positive gain do you need on the heads to make you want to take that bet? So is it 4,000? Is it 5,000? Is it 7,000? You can see that as we change the reference point, that people need a higher positive outcome to offset the potential for loss. That's the risk aversion. The same thing happens with your clients. If you're dealing with a high stakes website where their sales are important or a small change can really hurt your sales, you might see that people need a much higher positive gain to offset the loss of an, a losing experience. In summary, you need to be aware of this as a factor that we deal with as humans, where everyone has a natural loss aversion tendency. And as testers, you need to not only understand it, you need to educate yourself and your clients so they see that there are good reasons to do testing and they don't need to worry about the loss. I made a whole video on things on risk and the positive outcomes that can come with risk, how risk is both positive and negative. But I just want to summarize a few things and a few takeaways you can do. For example, you want to make sure that you're isolating variables with every test. If you isolate a variable, 
Even if something loses, you know that it was that variable that caused the loss. And so you learn that something is working or not working. And so the loss isn't as big a deal as learning that something works. Another thing to keep in mind is you need to teach yourself and your clients the, the positive side of risk. For example, that when you limit a test in scope and, and time to two weeks and so a certain percent of traffic or 100% of traffic even, the limit is, is creating boundaries around what you will lose with the test. A two week loss isn't a big deal. If it's an indefinite loss, that is a big deal. If you do a test and you find a winning experience, you now get to realize those future gains indefinitely because you implement the winning experience. And so the positive side of risk gives you more gains and more opportunity. Whereas with testing, you're limiting that loss aversion that can happen or the loss, that actual loss that can happen because you're, you're creating boundaries with the test. When you do proper testing, it safeguards you against the losses that could occur because you're limiting the time, you're limiting the potential for a losing experience to be implemented without ever knowing it's a losing experience. You also maximize the positive gains because any positive winning experience is implemented and you get those gains. So again, these principles of, of loss aversion can be dealt with if you understand the positive principles you should work with, like how testing maximizes your risks, your positive risk, how it minimizes your negative risk, and how the, these principles of testing will allow you to get better outcomes and do better testing. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And you can also visit testingtheory.com where you can see some of the courses and other videos just like this that I have, where you can become better at doing testing and get more conversions with every test that you do.